I'm going to call to order the uh, Board of County Commissioner meeting on this uh, third day of May, 2017. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Katnick. Present. Commissioner Hood. Present. Commissioner Prince. Present. Attorney Clint Smith. Present. And Clerk to the Board, Kelly Camper. Present. Okay, do we have any amendments to the agenda today? I did not, Mr. Chair. No. I think I've got one. Uh, well, I reserve the right, if, with your permission, to amend it later if something comes up. Sure. Okay, uh, audience introduction. Hi, Steve Cox, Westcliff, Peggy Collins, Rural Westcliff. Thank you very much. Uh, any public comment at this time? Mm -hmm. I don't see anything on the agenda in, under old business about what we were discussing yesterday on 4-H. Uh, we, we, we don't have to have it on the agenda because it already is old business. We can bring up other items that, that arise like this one because what we discussed yesterday, uh, this meeting had to be posted 24 hours in advance. I see. Yeah. But no, we it's, are going to discuss yes. it. <coughs> okay. Um, another record show that John Johnson has joined us. Good morning. Uh, do we have any minutes this morning? No. Okay. Commissioner items. Commissioner. Nothing has transpired in the last 24 hours for me to report. Donna? Uh, nothing in that way. I reserve the okay. right for executive session. Okay, no commissioner items. Uh, <laughs> at this time, the next item of agenda would be executive session. Do we have a need for executive session today? Uh, we do. Okay, we will go into executive session. We need to state the do we need to state the purpose before we go into it? We do, don't we? Yes. Okay, and the purpose for the executive session will be? I actually have two purposes. One is employee and one is for legal counsel. Okay. Uh, having said that then, with the uh, motion, do I hear a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion has been made by uh, Commissioner Prince, seconded by Commissioner Hood to go into executive session, citing Colorado Revised Statutes 24 6 402 <coughs> regarding 4B. Uh, and the purpose of the executive session has been stated. And at this time, uh, we will vote on the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Question Will the employee be present? One of them. Thank you. So we really need to clear the room for our executive session? Waiting for instructions. Okay. <laughs> okay. We do need to clear the room, please. Thank you, folks, and we will try to move through this somewhat expeditiously if we can. <coughs> do you a motion to resume the regular Custer County Board of County Commissioners meeting? A second. The moved and seconded. Mr. Hood made a motion seconded by Commissioner Prince to go back into executive session. Back out of regular session. Regular session. To go back into regular session. Correction. To go back into regular session. Uh, any discussion? No. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We are now back into the regular session of the Custer County Board of Commissioners. You want to take a break now? Let's take a five minute break. Okay. You can. For your comfort. Who is this? Jamie. Jamie. Oh, okay. okay. And it's to go to me? Or? No. Mm -hmm. I think Bob asked for it. Oh, okay. Of course, it affects it to go to me. That's from JD. That's from who? JD. Oh, JD.
Everybody ready? No. Oh, sure. oh. Here's this map we asked JD about. And the problem I see in looking at it, uh, as he's shown the land ownership, is that the BLM just barely touches Corita Road. And it doesn't look to me, and we'll have to see, but it doesn't look like there's enough room there for them to make a parking lot. And we were talking about that right away on, on uh, the old road, and it shows here that JD's records show that it's still the state of Colorado. Colorado State Highway 96 right away. So apparently the right away is still. And if that's the case, then he'd have to go deal with the state on it. <laughs> if they never abandoned it. We'll need to, you know, continue on, but this is yeah. apparently is, is a question. What I'm talking about, folks, so we're not in session yet. Uh, yesterday, when Justin Kroll was here with the uh, Division of Parks and Wildlife, was requesting we try to open up the old Rosita, the old Corita Road from the, you know, where the place is that's got the eagle alongside the road. Mm -hmm. There's a road to go straight south. That used to be the old Highway 96, mm -hmm. and they're wanting to to reopen that, to have access to BLM lands for hunters and recreation. And we've got some questions as to whose right of way it was, if it's still there, and so forth. So that, that's what we're just, just visiting about. Ready? Mm -hmm. I will reconvene the session of the Board of Custer County Commissioners at 10.42. I attest that I am chairman. Pardon? 1021. 1021. Okay. The, the glare of the light, I can't see the clock. I see two black hands up there. 1021. I attest that I am the chairperson of the Custer County Board of Commissioners and confirm that the discussion remained on topic and that no matters were adopted or no actions or decisions were made. Okay. As the county attorney, I'll state for the record that we went into executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Um, the discussion on the personnel issue was done on the record in accordance with legal requirements. Uh, then, in order to get legal advice from me, from the county attorney on that same personnel issue, we went off the record and there was a discussion at all times that remained on topic as to that personnel issue. After that, we switched over to a different legal issue, uh, which was getting legal advice from me concerning the 4-H matter that was discussed yesterday and uh, that will be discussed at future meetings as well. 
And again, there was legal advice, no decisions were made. There was a course of action that <clears throat> has been agreed on as to how to proceed, but there hadn't been any decisions on anything yet, and that discussion also stayed on topic. Thank you. Uh, this does con uh, conclude the executive session. We're ready now to move into the new and old business. Uh, I think I would like uh, perhaps to, to modify this a little bit. Would you like to give a brief update on where we were or when I was saying about the... Well, I know we've got people in the audience that uh, want to know what's happened in the last uh, 24 hours. So uh, I did make the phone call to Mr. Tony Frank. I am still waiting for his response. So that's where we are. So uh, as Clint stated, we discussed uh, some uh, various courses of action, uh, but until I make that contact, nothing can happen. And we're attempting again today, and we'll continue to continue in this. And again, I remind you, if necessary, we do have a meeting in the morning. If we need to continue on, we do have the ability to do that. Okay. All right, let's move on now at, uh, to Kelly with the special event permits that we have. We have a number of them. Uh, the first one is Club of America. Right. And a, oh, excuse me. I, I need to make oh, a excuse disclosure. Me, Please yes. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I just, uh, before these come up on the agenda, I need to um, probably uh, excuse myself from voting because uh, what's listed here is taking place at my ranch, so it's a conflict of interest. Which one? Or both? You have a question? Uh, two of them. I have, yes, I have a question about Beverly being an independent contractor. Now, I've been reading into the IRS publication 15 A, the 2010 edition, page 6, and it states an employee is generally subject to business instructions about when, where, and how to work. All the four examples of how to work, when and where to work, what tools or equipment to use, what workers to hire or to assist with work, where to purchase supplies, what work must be performed, what order of sequence. So that's not an independent contractor. And based on the job description you read yesterday, she can't hardly do anything by herself, unless you guys direct her to. Yeah, I think there was some confusion <clears throat> with regards to the job descriptions. We had previously discussed job descriptions from last week. <clears throat> that was our work session. The two job descriptions were, uh, we had to bring up what was the um, county executive uh, the extension agent and what I had to state yesterday was that when we are in process with CSU that that job description will change and what I was reading to everybody yesterday was what we had in place and pointing out there were things on that job description which Robin did not do so I was just trying to bring the colleagues up to date with that job description the other was, if we have a permanent person now, because the situation changed, and my word is permanent person hired, what I was discussing yesterday were two interim positions. Those would be contract labor. They're not the job descriptions. Yeah, but... You but you have complete control over when she works, how much she's paid, where she works, what her hours are, and you try to put a percentage on it. So that's not an independent contractor. No, that was the job description for the office manager. We're not hiring at this point in time. We haven't got her job description put together, yeah. her contract. Once we have the contract together, we'll be able to discuss it. But I'm going to go another attacked and I'm just just in a general sense. I, I think there was confusion oh. yesterday. It's my understanding that even Jordan Heidberg did not understand that we were saying these are two interim positions that will be hired as contract labor. They weren't supposed to be abiding by those job descriptions. Those are permanent positions within our county. So are, you going to have a, are you going to have a job description for the interim people? We'll have a contract description. 
in that contract. Well, if I may, Stephen, just we've been involved with this Wetmore community building for a year. And we have a contract with the builder, a contract with the architect. But in that contract, it specifies what they're doing, but we have continual meetings and decisions to make with that contractor as we come to specific tasks or specific issues. Uh, some of these, as an example, we say, well, uh, we've got to re redo the bathroom downstairs, so we have to go through a change order and all that stuff, and we have to approve it. I think we can word some of the stuff that we're looking at from the 4 standpoint. Here's what we agree to do, but I think there's some precedent in existing contracts if you spell it out and keep it clean to where we can still have input, because we have input on a daily basis almost with the contractor in in, in Wetmore that's doing the building. Now that is a contract recognized by the state. Or, I mean, my, I'm sure so. my assumption is that is a contract legally recognized. And it specifies tasks that they're doing, but in there, there are uh, changes that occur, uh, additions that are made, this type of thing, which is a very routine matter to discuss with the builder with the architect and with uh, one commissioner that's over the project or sometimes the whole board does that make sense yes but he has one of the other things in here an independent contractor can make a profit and have other job opportunities these people don't have any other job opportunities if, i still think there's a well maybe we should yeah. have one of our attorneys uh, there's I'm sorry. I didn't it's, it's this not, is, yeah, it's not an independent contractor. It's it's a it's. A, do you know what a 1099 is? That's an independent contractor. Okay, okay. But we can we have other um, relationships with people in our county that are 1099 contractors. But they probably do other things than just the county work. That's what, what I'm asking here is. Beverly isn't going to be prohibited from doing other work if she wants to. It's not necessarily a 40-hour-a-week it's job. Not, yeah. it's, it's to work as needed to do right. the things that are needed under the terms of the independent contract. So she's clearly an independent contractor. There's no legal issue there. Yeah. What we were discussing yesterday were two different things. So is it, when you guys develop the contract, are you going to bring it before the public so we can hear it? Of course. Okay. We just, we were stating... You have to look at what the course of events was from Friday, Steve. There wasn't much time to do anything but an outreach. And that's what I thought we were very transparent yesterday with what that outreach was. It's just that there was confusions because our work session yesterday was to discuss job descriptions. It had nothing to do one or the other. It just happened to be the same topic of events. Extension. Extension. Is that yesterday we made a very serious effort to be transparent. And I I felt like we achieved that just as what we were trying to do. Uh, and as we go forward that same effort will be made. So at this point in time, until such times as we have a contract negotiated, we can negotiate that, then bring it before the public so you see what we're doing. Okay. okay. We're just not there yet. And we're not there yet because I haven't talked to Tony Frank. John. Um, Bob Yeljohn to executive session out of order of the agenda. Could you call us where we are on the agenda now? Right now, I just amended the agenda. We're in new and old business, and because the extension is an old business item, we have the prerogative, and I thought you folks deserved a a very brief update on what we had come across on the executive session. Are you going to go back to the other items, commissioner items, attorney items? No, we're we've been through all of it. They're all done. Okay, I thought you, you just you were late. You came in late, John. My apologies. We went right down the list, John. Okay, so I suggest we do stay on our and, and we do need, but but does that answer where we are, folks? I I don't want any misunderstanding, and we are. I assure you, we are. So how do we find out that you actually have that you may have made contact with CSU and you might have be having the meeting addressing it tomorrow? Would this be something we put on, on our website? 
Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know what time, Mr. Frank, I'm going to try again. I know, again. but how and do we know if the, you're having the meeting tomorrow the, or not? Well, right now, we're, as far as I'm concerned, we have stuff we know we'll need to discuss in the morning, at least an update yeah. on what's happened the rest of the day. Yeah. And this meeting may only last 15 minutes. Yeah. But we do need to have the legal ability to make some decisions if we need to make some decisions tomorrow. And I think as soon as we know, and I think we will have something to report in the morning, as soon as we know where we are, uh, I don't know, what would you suggest to get it up? I think we move. We meet tomorrow morning. We have it posted. And if there's nothing new, we'll adjourn at that point. But let's meet tomorrow so that we'll give you anybody who would like to know if we do have information. The problem is we don't have the information at the moment, so if we have it tomorrow, there'll be a forum for you to understand. And that's at 9 o'clock? Yes. Yes. And I, I don't anticipate this meeting tomorrow unless we get really into the weeds going a long time. I just want to have that so if we need to take some official action, that we've got the ability tomorrow to to make those decisions. Otherwise, uh, we either have to call a special meeting or, or postpone it for two weeks. I don't want to postpone it for two weeks. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Yes, thank you. Appreciate your courtesy, folks. Uh, now we're going to go back, John, on the agenda. We're a new and old business, and we're going to move into the special events. We recognize that, uh, that Donna has requested to uh, recluse herself from at least some of these discussions. Uh, and I uh, certainly recognize that. Uh, Jay, what's your thoughts? I think she has every right to recuse herself. If it has a personal interest in a county business, she needs to do that, and I appreciate her taking that lead. So we will, we will recuse. If she wants to participate in discussion as an individual, I think she would have that right, but will not be in a position to vote. Correct. She has the, if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, she has the right to address it as an individual as long as you go on record and say, I'm discussing this as Donna Hood, not Commissioner Donna Hood, and then you can talk about whatever you need to talk about. And one of the things I guess maybe you're thinking about is the trail run. You're involved I, in I would rather Kelly do her presentation, and it would be, there's two out of three permits here that involve me. Okay, that's where we're coming from. Transparency of government and, and avoiding any perception of conflict of interest. Okay. All right, Kelly, are you ready to proceed? I am. <laughs> All right, let's move along. The special event uh, for Club America, Kelly Hunt concert, uh, is up for uh, discussion. That's the first one, and it is on June 3rd. And I have all the paperwork and all of the money. It's been posted, and so it just needs your guys' approval. Okay. <coughs> Where's that being held? Is that at? At the, at the ranch. Ranch. <laughs> And it's Custer 2020. Custer 2020 is um, doing business as Club America. Got it. It's being held at the Painted View, but the person that's uh, making the application is Barbara Sutton. Um, I'll pass, pass those along. Excuse us, folks, while we quickly look at this. Each one of these special event permits, they have to have their application. They have to have a certificate of good standing from Secretary of State. They have a map of the area. They have to have permission from the property mm -hmm. owner. Um, and that's all there. And the, uh, I just would like to point out also what the permit is for is uh, to serve alcohol. to the best of your knowledge that the normal procedures that we follow for a special permit for alcohol sales has been followed and is up to date. Yeah. And the insurance and all that is up to date also. I make a motion that we approve the Public America especially event application. I'll second the motion. Do we have any discussion? No. Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And may the record show that Commissioner Hood has uh, recused herself from participation on this particular application. Now I know I've got a sign here. Um, well, we can get this before we're done. 
Yeah. Just hang on, don't want to take care. The next item we have is a special event permit for the Chamber of Commerce Rock and Soul Jam. Is that another one you're accusing yourself from? Uh, I am. Okay. I, I wasn't sure. If yes. She said two of the three. I wasn't sure. Let me just explain was. this. This is uh, an event that the radio station is holding, but they have asked the Chamber of Commerce to serve the alcohol. Okay. And who's hosting this? The our our local radio station. Radio station. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so this is on June seventeenth at the Painted View, and. Um, same thing. They've got all of their, um, all of the stuff that we need. And then I actually went on the radio station and printed off their little blurb about what exactly it was that they were doing, since this is the first time that they've done it. Rock and Soul Jam. New to the Valley for 2017, Wet Mountain Broadcasting Corporation and KLZR 91.7 FM present a one-day musical excursion to the past. For the majestic Sangre de Crystal Mountains as a backdrop, four diverse regional bands perform great music from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. The Valley's own Rimfire, Straight Shootin' Rock and Roll, the PA Rockers, Full Throttle 60s and 70s Rock Boogie Machine, uh, disco, dance music of the 70s, Biff, Gore, uh, and list some other musical uh, talents that will be uh, heard at this time. So that is a, and where will this take place? A pain of view. A pain of view? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you see anything in here that needs, uh, I see the maps and stuff are here. Uh, Certificate good standing. Do you any? Uh, let you look at this. Do you see anything at this time that would be a, a, a flag to you? Mm -mm. No. They got everything that they need to get. This, of course, would you have the same opinion if it wasn't Commissioner Hood? Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve. The special event permit um, hosted by um, the Chamber of Commerce and KRLZ called Rock and Jam on June 17th. KLZR. KLZR, I'm sorry. Thank you. All right, I'll second that motion. Do we have any discussion? I just want to add something, just so, because I know, Jay, it's your first time, but what Kelly also does is there there's a period of time before she presents to the board. She actually posts the events out at the ranch, the location where this is going to take place, so it's posted for the public to see right. for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In discussion, if not, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the... That was he already made a motion. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We, we need a second. Pardon? We, we need a second. second. Could you second it? Bob, no. Bob, I second it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I got the discussion so quick. Yeah. All right, the next one we have is a special events permit for liquor at the San Isabel Land Protection Trust Hard Scrabble Mountain Trail Run. Okay, and this one is for June 13th. Um, it is out at Bear Basin Ranch. Um, and they are just asking, uh, this is just a fermented malt. Just We're almost to you, Rusty. Um, <laughs> and they've got all their all their paperwork in there. Also. And I said you're not involved in this. I'm not state, involved, so, so I can't participate. Okay, yes. just clarifying. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Ms. Camper, did you see anything in this one that um, was out of place? I did not. that it's really hard to find a post a place to post a sign out there. Mm -hmm. oh, sure. 
check the secure the um, uh, insurance certificates and that kind of thing. Mm -mm. Uh, no, they don't ask for that. Kelly, I just want to. That would probably be between the landowner. And yeah, them. you said June thirteenth, and this says June third. Here's the third. Um. Oh, third. That looks like a 13 to me because that little slash there. I've okay. been having, I've been struggling with that one. Okay. Yes, it All is right. the third. So to verify, it's yes. the third. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the special events permit from the San Isabel Land Protection Trust Hearts Gravel Mountain Trail Run uh, to be held on June 3rd at Bear Basin. I'll second the motion as stated. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve the special events permit for liquor for the San Isabel Land Protection Trust. Well, any discussion? Uh, the only discussion I've had, I think, is that they had liquor out there before, or is this their first year? They've had it before. And we have no record of any kind of disturbances or anything from the sheriff, so there's no reason to, to have any kind of concerns. Mm -hmm. And on those, on the special event permits, we don't have to check with the, we don't have to get a check from the sheriff like we do on the site licenses, but yeah. I don't know if we... Yeah. But I haven't heard any kind of... All right, I will call for the question at this time. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Staff reports are is Gary out there or are you here? Just You're here. He's here. here. Gary's on his way. So. We will take, um, let's, let's move to landfill and recycling. Is Gary out there? He's walking in. Oh, he just walked in. <laughs> Hello, guy. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Sir. Uh, morning. Good to see you. Okay. You got the floor. Okay. Um, once again, on the subject of the con the uh, air conditioners for the motor graders. You know, since we last talked, what we were thinking about going was a uh, factory AC for these things. And they were going to run about $3,000 for the parts, and then installation was going to be about 3000 But since then, Byron has checked with Thermo King, and they can actually uh, sell us a rooftop uh, air conditioner for these units. And the price is going to be similar, but they're going to be units that are a lot easier to install, and we can just do those ourselves. So that's going to save us quite a bit of money on installation, like, you know, $12,000. So what we're looking at price-wise is $28,86.77 for each unit. For $28,67? Uh, $28,86.77. Okay. And that would be per unit. And then, uh, once again, we can just install those ourselves. What do we think it'll take, Brian, to install them? Uh, they figure about 12 hours. Okay, so this is something would be done in a week then. Yeah. And then working around other work and so forth that comes in and has to be addressed then. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there any uh, warranty issues with us doing the installation as opposed to someone else doing it? I don't know about that. That's something I'd have to ask um, uh, Byron if there is. I wouldn't think so since um, I don't know that he's certified as far as being a mechanic, but I think that we'd still have a warranty with him most likely. In fact, I think the air conditioner that got installed in one of the blades, the uh, factory style, is probably, I think there was a warning that came with it, even though we did it ourselves. So. I especially like the Thermo King because this is what most of our reefer trailers have. Right. They've okay. got a good record of performance mm -hmm. and don't require a lot of maintenance. It is pretty appealing, the fact that we can do it ourselves. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's a proven unit that I've been around for a lot of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Gary, what, what's your bottom line there? As far as costs? Uh, for four units, it would be 11547 And just to reiterate, that is a budgeted, budgeted item, right? We would, no, it's not actually a budgeted item. We'd have to pay for that out of capital improvement. 
you know, I talked to We have improved it. I think we have improved it to about to, to, to get these installed, didn't we? Uh, I think we were waiting on information on Correct. what it was going to cost before we yeah, approved it's not, it. But yep. you said you spoke with Donna? Uh huh. She said we could pay for it out of capital improvement. I'm not concerned. Maybe I appreciate you putting <clears throat> the, the warning up, but we're saving $9,000 in installation costs. Yeah, or ten, twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, actually cost. twelve thousand on four units, nine on three. So, so if we had an issue, we still, and then, and yes, it's got a cost of insulation, but that's on a salary employee. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion that we approve uh, the purchase and installation of the four air conditioners and the motorators? I'll make the motion to move forward with uh, the purchase of four. Correct. Units, yes, mm -hmm. totaling eleven thousand five forty-seven oh eight. As long as my math is correct, okay. but I think that's what it is. Twenty-eight eighty-six. What I did was I've got, they've got these units broken down into costs for like the rooftop part of it, uh, hoses for it, the compressor and and whatnot, and I just total those up, and that's how I got the twenty-eight eighty-six seventy-seven multiplied that's it by four. Oh, would you consider amending that to not to exceed twelve thousand? So if we have a few incidentals, we got it covered. Sure. So we'll amend it. the motion to to uh, read up to twelve thousand dollars. And I'll second that. Okay. Have some discussion. Gary, something else you want to add? Uh, no, I don't think like so. Okay. Just discussion. Just just because I'm asking the capital improvement budget that's going to pay for this. Is that coming out of? Your capital improvement, or is this the county capital improvement? Road and bridge. It comes out of road, road and bridge, bridge capital. Which is a separate. That, correct. Okay, I knew it well. I just wasn't sure which yeah, one was coming Otherwise, we'd have I want to make sure it's okay. coming out of your budget is where it ought to come mm -hmm. from. I want to make sure that was appropriate. Sure. No, and that's, Thank you. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Road and bridge is different because they have their own taxing authority, so we have to be careful that's how, how, we, how we structure that. Okay. Uh, All in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll get him. This will be nice to have. <laughs> I know the guys will appreciate it. I was out pushing snow on Sunday and no warmer than what it was. It got pretty hot in that camp. Well, it's so. a safety. Safety. The dust safety. is where Correct. Really yeah. coming from. Yeah. Yeah. As well as, you know, the heat. Could, could you maybe give us a quick update on the, the snow? Removal this last weekend. How many issues or how things went? Uh, it went really snow well. Dips, um. uh, the deepest snow I think that we found was probably I measured some over here on 271, and it was 12 inches. Uh, most of it uh, on 271 was probably about nine or 10 inches. Now over here to the Elk, towards the Elk Ranch, we had some 10 inch snow out there also. But it seemed like the bulk of the snow, the heavier stuff, was in the eastern part of the county and the northeastern part. Yeah, and they didn't have any troubles down there? No. Uh -uh. No, I, uh, on Sunday morning, I <clears throat> helped Vince Coke run that route from uh, over in his area, which went from uh, Resi to Road down to Elk Ranch, and we didn't have any problems with it. Now, visibility on sun or Saturday morning was kind of tough because of uh, it's still snowing pretty hard and the wind was blowing. But. I was out and about it. Seven o'clock in the morning down Copper Gulch, going to Canyon, <laughs> and that one was interesting. And coming back, there were lots of deep ruts on Copper Gulch. Yeah, being it's as late as what it is in the winter, where I mean it's melting and getting yeah. real slushy, and I mean it's good moisture for the roads, but it just makes it kind of difficult to push the snow off because the the road underneath the snow is uh, it's not very forgiving. Mm -hmm. It's soft, mm -hmm. and we've got to be real careful. And not try and take too much off, otherwise we get into the road material. So I encourage the guys to leave a couple inches. And while it melts and turns to slush and it's not very pleasant to drive in, it's I think it's the best best way to do it. <laughs> uh, on a different subject, um, what more are, are you? Um, is that working well between <clears throat> what they need from your folks? And the Wetmore project, in terms of the holes they're digging and the covering of them, that kind of thing, is that is that going okay? Yeah, it is. Uh, right now, their backhoe is down. It uh, it needs some repairs to it, so they've got ours. And I was down there yesterday, and, and uh, they were installing that sump pump when I was down there. Oh, good. And I'm pretty certain they've got that all installed. But uh, 
to my understanding, the um, grease traps not uh, finished yet. So they're just going to hang on to our backhoe and uh, unless we need it for something. And uh, I know that uh, on um, North Creek, they've had some uh, pretty good runoff from the snow melt and it's plugged some culverts. So that's another reason we left our backhoe down there in case they need to unplug some culverts or something. But uh, yeah, it's going real well. Thanks. For that. I've had a request from Jeff Uthier. Uh, the Lake uh, Lewis Creek Trail, which is down at Wetmore, mm -hmm. where those fires come through. There's a trail that goes road goes right straight west, and it's a, a public access road. It's one of the, we maintain. But when we get on the end of the road, there's a cattle guard that's completely full. There haven't been cattle in there for a number of years, but they're <coughs> now. Oh, okay. And they've basically just hung a, a Potter River panel across it, and. Uh -huh. People going through it and not a, not a crisis, but sometime maybe we could jerk that off so that that cattle guard dig that out so that cattle guard could be functional. That would be part of our forest service maintenance. And where's that again? Oh, it's on Lewis Creek. Good for your opinion. And uh, Lewis Creek, uh, when you go down to Wetmore, I don't know if you remember, there's a forest service sign along the 96. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about maybe 200 yards up to the north of there. There's a a little short road that goes off to the west, and that's uh, Lewis okay. Creek. Well, it right. says Lewis Creek Trailhead is how the sign is as you're coming up to it. Oh, okay. 23 mile marker. Pardon me? 23 mile marker. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into that, and if we need to get down there and clean that, we can pull it out and we'll do that. Another area, I know we've got a bunch of stuff, routine stuff here, another area I would like to talk about. Sunday morning, I guess, our search and rescue had to go out on a mission for somebody stranded in a pickup on 12 Mile, which is routine. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, we had <clears throat> another emergency, and it just so happens it was Jack Hobby who used to live up here. He works for Pueblo County now. Mm -hmm. And he was east of 96 on what they call, or east of I-25 on what they call the Red Creek Road. Mm -hmm. He left at 6 in the morning. And at 11 at night, he'd run off the road, got stuck, and was out of fuel. Oh, boy. And they were trying to mount a rescue mission to get him, and they finally got in there with a the helicopter sometime that morning. And the wind had broken up. They could pick him up and take him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, my only thoughts on this is, might give some thoughts, is if we have something like this happen, how do we respond? I mean, we search and rescue has got some equipment. But, uh, you know, I don't, uh, they're trying to get a snow cap, but right now we have is our snow machines on tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we, <clears throat> I don't know if, we don't have a cat that's got any kind of a cab on it, do we? A cat as in? A, a, a caterpillar blade? A, a, a dozer? Do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it have a cab on it? Yes. Uh -huh. We've got a, I think it's a 2012. Uh, okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where I'm going with this, yeah. is if we have an emergency where a road, crew member is stuck. I, I I haven't got all the details, but first of all, <laughs> Jack's my cousin, so I'll pick on him. First of all, he knew better than to run out of fuel. He'd been out there <laughs> since 6 that morning, so that was 12, 17 hours. You know who I'm talking, you know Jack. He'd been out there 17 hours. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure Pueblo County's got some kind of a limitation that says after X number of hours you refuel or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But just so we don't I, I don't think that would happen here, but there was an example of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, he, was, he was in the hospital. I don't know, just to be checked out or whatever, but he was in the hospital as a result of, it was 30 degrees in the cab, and mm -hmm. he was, the last text message he sent, he was very, very cold. Yeah. So, that's a, mm -hmm. just an emergency thing, and perhaps hopefully have something in mind uh, ahead of time, it's just... And I can't think any place we'd strand anybody that we couldn't get to reasonably quick. Yeah. But, um, okay, excuse me, I'll just go ahead with your report. Um, as far as work we've got planned, I'd like to replace a cattle guard over here on the line cable. We, um, we actually have two cattle guards on 341 and they're uh, Bureau of Land Management cattle guards. They haven't had cattle in this area where these cattle guards are at for about four years, so we're checking into the possibility of removing those cattle guards and maybe using one of them over on the Y cable. The one on the Y cable is real narrow, and uh, like I don't know that it's any more than 16 foot. 
and it really bottlenecks the traffic down. Two people can't hardly get across it at one time. So anyway, I'm looking at possibly uh, replacing that cattle guard, and we've got some great work to do. Um, and then we're trying to do a lot of blading. The snow that we've got really tracked the roads up, so we're trying to get a lot of them back in shape. Have we had any chance to look at some signage, pedestrians walking or anything on White Cable? I haven't, uh, I haven't really gotten down to the point where I'm, I'm certain what we're needing over there, Bob. I know that you mentioned it one time, but I mean, that's about as far as we got on that. What, okay. uh, I will <clears throat> contact the homeowners association, or you can, whichever uh -huh. you want. Uh, they, you know, they were concerned about speed out there. Right. And that's when Rusty, we fought forever, is speed going on White Eagle. Uh -huh. And they were concerned about people out walking, out exercising, mm -hmm. and not being seen. And I think basically where they were talking was partially going up that hill. You know, there's one hill there that's fairly steep in the black timber. Maybe something along there that says uh, pedestrian area or people walking area. Or, well, I don't know what the proper sign would be, but just something that notifies them that caution. Okay. So they're wanting the county to purchase some signs and install them? Is that what the deal is? Yeah, it's kind okay. of, yeah, but we would just put up a couple. And, well, I've been in communication with the uh, board president over there on this um, bridge off of airport on Waikago. We're going to be doing some work on it pretty soon as soon as we get a permit from... Uh, That's the bridge that goes up to Waikago or the one that goes to the country? It's, it's actually right off the airport and it's on Waikago and it, it goes north. <clears throat> it's an arch style bridge is what yeah. it is. It just needs a couple of days worth of work. But anyway, uh, I was going to alert them when we thought we might be working on it so they could divert some traffic. Well, why don't you visit and then we can make a decision on that. But I would, yeah. uh, again, just <coughs> preventative. What I'll do, I, what I could do, Bob, is get a hold of them and see what they've got in mind and then get some prices and then I'll get back with you on it. And we so we talked about there. that when... Uh, I guess it was Chris and I met with them regarding speed and so forth out there. Okay. All right. Okay, well, you have a sign repair and installation. Um, oh, that's just some work. Routine that we, stuff. Yeah, work that we've done. The, we had a lady that was fussing uh, because we put up the flooding signs in Wetmore, and she thought we were... <coughs> Uh, being too explicit, and basically the sign said this area may be prone to uh, post wildfire, post -wildfire, wildfire flooding. I mean, it's just a warning sign. And I've warning. checked with other people, and that's what Pueblo County uses and so forth. So I think the wording prone doesn't say it's going to happen, but it says it's prone to it, it's, it could happen. Mm -hmm. I think that's appropriate language, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'll get back with her and say that's we've perfect. gone through it, and that's that's what we've done. And I think it's oh. uh, well. I think it's uh, <clears throat> Cindy got the idea from what other counties were using, and so she yeah, we did. It's and the, the wording, but but that was just a you know a, 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 she lives there at Greenwood in one of those double whites. Yeah. So Sounds like the, another example of someone complaining for the sake of complaining when everything, I mean, how could you complain about a caution that this will catch a flood? We discount those things. Yeah. Okay, go, go ahead, Gary. Uh, that's actually all I've done, honestly. I mean, it shows the scope of work that we've done in March, and, and that's about it. How is your <coughs> lay road coming? Is that, you're working on pines in your lay, weren't you? Yeah, we're, uh, what we're doing is we're trying to narrow those up a little bit. The ditches are filled in with material on the roads pretty wide so <clears throat> since we've got this snow we've kind of slacked off on working on pines we're trying to do some blading where the roads are war sported but uh, we've still got more to do out on pines. Is there <clears throat> any issues with the plant material you're pulling up because we have to... No out in that area that's actually good material coming out of the ditches and uh, some places where you're uh, we don't have as good a quality of material, and we have to put some road base on top. But out there, I think we can get by with pulling the material out of the ditches, and then when we get done with the road, we can walk away from it and not have to haul anything on it. So. Once you finish up there, where do you think your next major effort would be? 
Well, I'd like to do some work on the uh, road going south of uh, the lake, on uh, which would be 241. It needs the same thing. It needs some ditches established on it, and the road's pretty wide. It's probably 29 or 30 feet in places. I'd like to narrow it up. It makes it easier to maintain those. And then 192 and 193 need some work on them. Uh, they've gotten low in the middle. They haven't had any work for a while, so... Okay, you, uh, and you're... Uh, okay, I guess that's what I was thinking. And then we did some work on Ule, and there's a stretch through there where it's pretty poor material. It's not very long. Maybe a quarter of a mile, but we need to haul some road base on it. And uh, I plan on doing that. When we're hauling, does it make any sense to? Uh, now, do we do use our just to put belly dumps, or do we use our dump trucks also, our plow trucks also? To haul? We just use the belly dumps. It, okay. <clears throat> it makes the process a lot easier for putting the material on a windrow and then laying it in. So we use the. Well, we've got enough to keep everybody busy. As enough as in. Enough. I mean, if we don't have operator wait <coughs> 20 minutes for gravel. No, usually it depends on the distance we're hauling. If it's going to be a long way, sometimes they may get it laid down before the trucks get back and be waiting a little bit. But typically it takes them from the t point in time when the trucks and trailers dump the material till they get back. There, It takes them that long to get the material laid down. We lay it down as they haul it. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? If we want to look to fuel consumption from the county and and by the road and bridge and and the sheriff and so forth, it looks very similar to what it normally looks like. Um, we do have the budget in here and for capital improvements. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we're missing that. It's not actually a line mm -hmm. item on there that I'm seeing. <coughs> Okay. When I talked to Donna, she said there was about $100,000 in, <coughs> in the capital outlay. How's the new truck working? It's working fine. We did have a problem. We were going to haul a piece of equipment to Pueblo, and we don't have a headache rack on it. And that tires are designed, I mean, the lugs are such that they pick up rocks. And we had one hit the back glass in it and break it out. We've since purchased a used headache rack that we're going to put on it so we can probably, hopefully, prevent that from happening anymore. But Just otherwise, it's working. Yeah. And it's been a few weeks, but Donna and I did review the job descriptions that mm -hmm. you submitted. We made some um, corrections and comments and sent that off to uh, Miss Mummy at CTSI. Okay. So we're just waiting back. You get him back and pass them on to him. To well, we're going to do that all at once. Yeah, but I mean, once you come back, mm -hmm. you'll have adequate time to look at it to be sure that it meets his needs yep. or not. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we were just being consistent <coughs> from one to the other, just with the way things were listed. Sure. Okay. Okay. Works for me. <laughs> uh, we have the RFP for the permit bridge. Mm hmm. And uh, we should be advertised in the okay, did, um, did you write this down or where did this come from? I did not write that. Did, did Bobby write this or you, the RFP? Actually, uh, Brenda. Brenda did? <coughs> uh huh. She actually, Brenda, you got some templates and, mm -hmm. and some yeah. suggestions. And yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Hayson, who's the project manager, <coughs> project coordinator, or whatever, um, gave me all the templates and I just filled it in for our, our needs. And um, Gary has given me some feedback and I made some tweaks. And um, this is uh, what I sent to Jimmy and he approved it. Yeah, I think it's going to meet the needs for what we would for that project. So we, I, I guess we need to decide where you want to advertise it. Yeah, I think we need to. Oh, do you guys see the page I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to advertise in the Tribune as well as a, what do you what do you think? Oh, we need to. We need to advertise that in three newspapers, is that right? It didn't say specifically. I have a couple.
couple of engineering firms that I'm going to send a letter to. And then it's it's just advertising, it doesn't say. But you know, I don't know, are there engineering firms around here? I mean the Tribune or the Sentinel would be just for local. Yeah. For local and then I I'd suggest advertising maybe one of the newspapers down well even in Springs. I think in the interlocal I was thinking in the interlocal agreement that uh, stated in there would need to be advertised in three newspapers. But I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that what you think so? Okay. okay. So I'd suggest maybe one in Pueblo and maybe one in the Springs. And that's what I had, the yeah. Chieftain and the Springs Gazette. Okay. And then the local. All right. I didn't hear paper here. Yep. Or both or yeah, but you suggested what? Oh, uh, one of the uh, newspapers in the Springs and one in Pueblo and then our local. And we have the Gazette, we okay. have, which is in the Springs. We have the Chieftain, which is Pueblo. Okay. Yep. And then both of our local papers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. Well, when only one local paper is listed. If you want the other one, then... That's what we're saying. We, I just mentioned earlier that... And that was just a... Um, <coughs> what do you think? A type of a thing. Yeah. So... Well, I'm so it's up to you guys. If we do a local, we probably ought to do with the Sentinel since there are. Um, the Sentinel's on there. Okay. Yeah, that's it. But are you saying you want additional trivia? I think we want to add it. I think we added it. As we, okay. as we act on so I think we I add. I thought you were talking about them in lieu of the Sentinel. I apologize. I didn't understand. No, no. I think we need to add the Sentinel to the papers that we have here. I mean, the, the Tribune to the papers. Because that would be the Tribune Sentinel, both local. Chieftain and Pueblo and the Gazette in the Springs. So four papers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do they have to do an approval on that? Uh, Who? The okay. yeah. commissioners as far as this RFP, do they have to approve that or make an approval on that? Uh, I think <coughs> it ought to be. Okay. It's my opinion, but... Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Well, I concur for a legal opinion. <laughs> Maybe make an approval on the way it's written in the advertisement uh, in the in the those four newspapers. So how do they get the? Oh, I know what you're asking. We're going to put all that stuff on <coughs> the county website, and then the the link to that will be um, in the advertisement. So we need to put that. We need to add that to what we have here for the RFP. Then um, she's got all this. <laughs> it's it's already in the newspaper ad. All of this will be. Oh, this pages this, of things. Th this attachment's going to go in the in the newspaper. No, no, no. That I've written a separate ad for the newspaper. Did I did I not include it in your paperwork? That's his first page. Well, I have the RFP here, and then no, where the, we're going to go with this it. This is a separate. Then I've got another sheet over here that's labeled attachment one. Yeah, the all the attack the RFP and all the attachments will be on the website. Okay. And the newspaper ad will have the link to the RFP. That's what I'm asking. So we've yes. got that. And I I'll, I'm printing it out here and um, and I've already talked to Chuck and he's all good with it and everything. So Okay. And that will have the bridge report and the site map on yes. top of the two ones? Uh -huh. okay. <clears throat> and actually, I'll have to, since it's more than one attachment, I'll have to, um, I'll have to put more than one link in there, so. Gary, the scope of this project in terms of, what would you anticipate? Are we talking about a $10,000 project, a $50,000 project? I mean, I know we'll find out when we get the bids back, but I mean, what what's the scope of it? In, up General. to 140. 140. An art style culvert, which is what we'd like to go with, an aluminum four sided culvert, is going to run about $65,000. And then there's their engineering costs on top of that, and then um, the demolition of the old structure and road prep work and so on and so forth. We're talking another 30 or 40,000, so okay. it'll be less than 140. Okay. So. And also, I think we were talking earlier about getting it done within a week or something. Yeah. Uh, Having it in next week. And we're not going to do this till fall, so we don't interrupt people's hay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we're thinking well, October would be the best time for us to do it. Jimmy said that they can't get their paperwork done until like February. 
That's so it's next spring. Timeline. That's what I saw in your correspondence. Said next didn't spring. Do you think we could go ahead with the project? <clears throat> we'll just we just won't be refunded for it until next year. Is that right? I you have what? to talk to Jimmy, but okay. he said that the paperwork won't be done. C dot won't have their paperwork done until like February. You know what? I might. I'll get a hold of C dot. Yeah. And I'll find that out. Well, <clears> but, with, was, but with that in mind, you've got a timeline on here. So have you looked at the timeline? It's five years. Uh, the anticipated schedule that I'm talking about, Brenda, oh. st says uh, proposal submittal deadline is June 2nd, interviews June 7th, designer selection June 21, fee negotiation June 22nd, uh, presentation of the selected <coughs> designer July 5th, and date for design information to the county August 1. Now there, that has one on changed, there. and I sent that to you um, oh. a couple days ago. Okay, when I, I just talked have to Jimmy. It. Okay. And, and that she date for design that. information to Custer County, Jimmy said, said to make it February 1, 2018. Yep, I see that. Mm -hmm. And because they won't have their. So it takes them that long to do their stuff. Okay. So. Just get it in the books. And just so we're on the same page, we visited about this, but I, I want some colleagues' comments, but I would like to see this bridge <laughs> across, almost across the right of way, so we have room for people to walk alongside of it and not have to walk into the traffic lane to walk across the bridge. Okay, yeah, we can we can relay that information to the engineering firm that we end up... I mean, it's not that project. much farther, but it makes it safer. I mean, we do have room there, mm -hmm. I think. <clears throat> and when I got a bid for the culvert design for this roadway, that's something we talked about because I knew that you mentioned that, so... What do you think? <clears throat> it's obviously safe. You know, we're getting a lot of people walking. I see it there. on a daily basis. You know, I walk that way all the time. <laughs> I prefer that, okay. so I'm agreeing. Uh, the ad that Donna, or Brenda has compiled, I guess Donna looked at it. Custer County is soliciting proposals for qualified firms to provide engineering design services for the replacement of a three to six foot diameter CMP corrugated metal pipe, corrugated metal pipe on County Road 160 over Grape Creek. This design shall be an arch four-sided culvert that meets CDOT standards for culvert design. The project design shall accommodate for current roadway traffic configuration and for the element right away while providing for safety and configuration of local traffic. RFP documents and related information can be found at the website and that's uh, PDF RFP Hermit Bridge dot PDF in addition to the, the county Leading. Uh, proposals will be received by the Custer County BOC. Our address until 4 p.m. June the 2nd may be submitted by as hard copies or via email and Brenda's. Questions concerning this RFP should be directed to Brenda Gady or email to Brenda at CusterCounty.gov. You want that coming to you also? We've actually changed the wording since because in here it specified what we were looking for as far as design for the project. We've actually. Oh, worked. right, right, yeah. Do you have the updated? I have. I, I didn't change the newspaper ad to reflect the update of the RFPs. We're so. not going to specify in there what design uh, we're looking for as far as a four sided uh, quirk and metal culvert. We're just going to leave that open for the time being. And then once the selection process is, is taken care of, then we can specify to them what we're lo looking for as far as the structure to go back in that. That roadway. So now, when we finish this one, I'm wondering what will be our next one. Will that be Pines or will that be Schoolfield? Schoolfield. Uh, either I think they're both in about the same condition, honestly. So yeah, um, flip a coin and choose one, honestly. <coughs> um, what I'd like to do is get with the state and see what kind of federal funds are available for another project because. Uh, a lot of times, if these federal funds aren't used up by us, they're going to be used up by somebody else if it's first come, first serve. So even though it's not urgent to get these structures replaced, if the money's available, we need go to ahead and get our hands on it now because it might disappear later. So I'll check with uh, CDOT and see what I can find out on federal funds availability. 
can go from there. But as far as which one, either one. <clears throat> have we had a chance to, we thought about starting a road counts? <laughs> yeah, but our counter's broken down and we're working with truck, Chuck trying to get it fixed. <laughs> okay, but we're, we're working on it. Yeah, I want to get because that. I want to get it working. So I, I'm curious to see what kind of traffic numbers we're getting on these roadways. And uh, this has been gone going for about three weeks trying to get that thing fixed. First we thought... That's right, you're on it. But yeah, well, I'm on it. And I would suggest that we look at traffic counts on, on Pines and Schoolfield and see which is, has the higher traffic counts as part of our decision process. That's a good idea. On which structure to take care of next. So <clears throat> if we get that thing going... We'll just... Okay, while we're waiting for this... Uh, I'm going to jump ahead, if I might, to the Burdemont Tower. Uh, do you know where the Burdemont Tower is located? Or they showed you. Well, you go up Burdemont Road, and you're going through that private property. Maybe you can help me out here. It'll be rusty. Uh, describe a little more the location of that tower. You know, I've never been up to it. Okay. Well, what we have, the way the requests come down through me, is that, and I've got to get with you and see what that agreement says. Initially, they thought that we owned the land around the tower, but we can find no evidence that we own it. It's just there by agreement. What kind of tower is it? It's a, a radio tower that we use for, I think, road and bridge is off there, sheriff's off of there. Mm -hmm. um, that's search and rescue, I think. Is that? I think it's it's for emergency use on. We can't right. hang a cell tower up right. there for phone service and stuff. Right. Oh, okay. But the request I had was that the road hadn't been worked in a number of years and was to see if we could grade it up to the tower because it is a county tower. Okay. And nothing that has to be done every year on an annual basis, but the, the landowner up there was, he says it's getting so rough we can't get up to it. And I'm sure Roger can take you to it probably. All right. Yeah, check I that. think it's something that, unless you folks have any objections, but where it's a county tower, I think we need to be uh, where we can access it. Sure. Okay. Right. Did you find that, Brenda? Yes. Um, yeah, instead of uh, it specifies an arch de design, all it says is the anticipated de design shall meet CDOT standards. That's all it says. That's so. Yeah, we just need to keep it pretty vague. Instead of so that will be what we put in the paper, what you have there. <clears throat> okay, could you print it off from your place? Mm -hmm. um, Okay, uh, letter of intent, for organization, more experience, approach, do, do you have that? Yeah, I'm going to say, Brenda, I don't have the most recent, I've been looking, um, the change that, that these guys have, for some okay. reason I don't have it. Um, you have the the work. I don't have the latest one. If it was in addition to the 5-3 board packet. Yeah, I emailed it like uh, Monday. And that might be why <laughs> things have changed a bit. Okay, I'd like to move forward. We do have the selection criteria uh, and the scope of the work. Uh, uh, it looks to me like we're pretty much routine. You, have you seen all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the scope of works. Uh, the same with the uh, Evaluation criteria. I think it's good to specify it now so there's no questions down the road. And here's a very bad picture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, transmittal form, which we'll have to change the day's name to your name. You, you have that all that stuff. Yeah. That's on the bridge report, I think. 2015, I've got a letter that um, come from the bridge inspector. In October 2015, have you seen any of these bridge reports? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the thing that caught my eye is the sufficiency just rating. A couple of tweaks. So. so I think the. The uh, inspection reports are like biennial, and I noticed that they uh, rate these bridges by a sufficiency rating, and the sufficiency rating, a sufficiency rating of about 85 is pretty good. 
uh, I think the last one I saw on that bridge was like 64 or something like that. So in two years, it's dropped that many points, 21 points. So it's a structure that probably ought to be replaced. It is safe, though, right? Yeah, it's safe. It's just something that needs some attention pretty soon. Fine. So uh, something we can leave in the ground for another team. You see one of the structures I inspected is the one down there on South Harsh <clears throat> Uh Have we got a line and can we get a line drawn on there we were talking for the, the water height in the creek? I was down there, when I was down there the day before yesterday, I looked at a uh, possible location for a uh, gauge and um, Till that snow melts, we can't really do much. Oh, yeah, too much snow there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As soon as that snow gets melted down a little bit, I'll go back we'll down there. I'll, I'll look at it closer, and we'll get something designed and in, in, in place. We're talking about putting a water gauge down there on on that bridge by uh, um, oh, at the east end of South Hartsgrove. Okay, where is? Structure point oh one dash three a is that is that Herman? Uh, without having that stuff in front of me, I can't. I, I don't. I'm not sure. I don't. I, <clears throat> which one are you talking? Well, about? I was just trying to start down the list to see what. Oh yeah, I don't have all this in front of me, so I'm not. I'm not able to tell you. If if you're wanting to know about all these, I can. Uh, we don't. I'm just. As a, yeah. We don't need that right now. Okay, I'll find. I don't uh, know but that's. Now. Doing do you folks see what I'm talking about here? Do you have that in your record? I do not. I don't know what that is. No. Okay. This is just part of our bridge report. It's recommended work on each one of these bridges. Where that come from? Uh, from the state? It come from our bridge report that we have by you know, like, or every two years. I don't have that. Well, here we are right here that we have the, uh, this list is hard scrabble. Uh, to Lapin Creeks, which is the clubhouse and the Waikago Road. Well, it is on there. It's on a bridge report. You find it? Yep. Okay. Um, what day is it? Where, where I am is uh, we have no restrictions. Oh, okay. Permit Bridge RFP for 5 3 J. Okay. Well, I think what I would like to do, if, we, if it's appropriate, would be to act on this. RFP and we can review the road report at a later time. Right. So we can move along. Does that complete, yeah. folks? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do I do I hear a motion to uh, publish the request for proposal? Make a motion that. We move forward with the Hermit Bridge project and the initial step of publishing in the four newspapers identified um, a request for proposal from the contractors. I'll second that, or do we have any discussion? Uh, the only part of the discussion I would have is that we have reviewed the, the ad that will be placed in the four newspapers and uh, the Tribune. Uh, the Sentinel, the Chieftain, and the Gazette. And uh, that's all the one from the discussion standpoint. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Anything else, sir? I think that's all my end. Okay, do either of you have anything else for road bridge? I'm pleased with what's going on. Well, I appreciate your work. I want to commend you and the guys. They worked really hard. I know you were busy this last weekend because I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we can't get it replaced, but we I think we're doing a good job. Thank you. And pass that along to our operators. I sure will. Thanks for working on the weekend. Oh, you're <laughs> welcome. Part of it. <laughs> but this guy just, you never know. I mean. Uh, yep, thank you. Tell it not to snow in the week, then you want it to work? That's right. <laughs> the other day, it didn't you know, snow, but he was working. Say that. <laughs> the other day, he was working on Friday because the road was moist and he could grade it and didn't want to work till Monday. All right, Gary, thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll tackle uh, landfill. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're a patient. Good morning. <laughs>
I apologize for running late, Rusty. Okay. Anything new and exciting? Uh, not really. Kind of short and sweet, I think, today, so. We did have an inspection. You mentioned and it that went was well. Up. So. Was that that same Since day when yeah. we met with? Right. 426, no apparent violations. I'm very impressed because considering all that goes on, I mean, you think to secure their, it's kind of like a food inspector. They like to find a little thing just mm -hmm. so it looks like they're working. When you get no apparent violations, I, I commend you. I mean, that's great. We have seven, uh, 1,700 yards in the first quarter, uh, 29,000 income. That's about where we we anticipate being. Yeah, I actually gave you 2016. Mm -hmm. That's 2016. And 2017. So we have, this is 16. Oh, here's 70. And we had five grand. Right. We've increased 200 yards, 300 yards. <coughs> I'm comfortable with that. Do any of you have any suggestions or questions? Uh, what did you think of the discussion with everybody that was in attendance at the last meeting down in Wetmore? I think that uh, it was refreshing, actually, to have Colorado Department of Health want to help out these smaller landfills. What a, what a great thing. I just haven't really ever heard anything from them like that before. So that's positive mm -hmm. on that end. They were good resources. I was just wondering if you've had any other communication with them since that meeting. Or are they going to get the ball rolling? Yeah, we talked a little bit when they came out for their inspection. But nothing more, you know, just... Um, they did tell me that on a transfer station that the regulations are a lot less than a landfill. Of course, we already knew that. Well, we didn't know that, so that's good to know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> regulations are a lot less. Okay. Still going to pay for our uh, well? Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I about fell over when they said that. Me too. Well, it's been a bone of contention for a while. And this is one of the cases we're putting it off. It saved us. Right. And hopefully we only need to drill one well because it's very expensive to monitor one well, let alone two. Especially as deep as they have to drill. You know, if they go 300 feet, 400 feet, whatever expensive to monitor those wells and plus the send it to the lab so <coughs> we'll talk them into one well how are we going to move forward ahead in getting pricing because that's what we were asking for um, pricing we for the well no we don't need that it would be looking at everything and trying to decide which way to go a transfer state you know station you had brought up your idea I mean, I just, I don't want us to just keep sitting on this. I want to see. Right. Where we are on this, um, that Chester was telling you about, they modified that some, uh, they, they're no longer using basic household garbage because they have glass in their compost and people don't like to have glass in their, in their flower bed. So they're using primarily car, the cardboard as their carbon source. Mm. But they're able to, uh, to go through it. It's now a one-day process instead of three days. They don't have to turn the windrows, they just build a big pile and cover it with, with cured compost and, and go through the process that way. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have an invitation to go down to visit Pine Top Lakeside. Uh, the gentleman I talked to wasn't there when I was there, but he was aware of the work that we had done. And uh, I'll be visiting with the uh, groundwater folks. Uh, they're interested. And I guess the bottom end of this, I would see it would lose, potentially lose cardboard to recycling income. But at the same time, uh, as you go through that compost process, uh, I think it would have a, well, I don't know, we'll just have to see what the reduction in landfill might be. In other words, we may just take uh, household waste 
and compost it with the idea that we're not going to try to sell it commercially because of the glass mm -hmm. and we're composting it with the idea that we're going to be able to reduce uh, the amount that goes into the landfill. And that reduction, uh, and I'm pulling part of this off the top of my head, but I think that reduction, uh, I still think it's between 70 and 80 percent reduction in volume. Mm. So that's, you know, this is stuff that we've got on the table, but the, sure. this process has been used for over 20 years. So they pretty well had the bugs out of it. And the thing we have to look at if we want to have a friable commercial product that we're selling, or if we're doing it only to reduce the volume and extend the life of the landfill. So I, that's where I am on it, uh, colleagues. I, I, I think probably what we're going to do uh, once we get with Round Mountain, and they just haven't got back, but mm -hmm. we'll probably set a date and go down and look at it, mm -hmm. spend a day, and if some of you folks want to go along, we can accommodate that also. But I think it would be worthwhile. Uh, they've also offered to go through their finances, through their records, so we can see what it's cost them, mm -hmm. so we can see what it costs with the system they currently have, and then we can mm -hmm. come look at it and see what we can go with from there. But should we be coincidingly looking, researching what a transfer station? The thing that that um, will have to happen either way we go, it's going to involve having a building for and for his and a transfer station and so, labor. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll still have to man it. We don't have to bury it, but we'll still have to man it. Is that right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but didn't they say they would help us? I think looking at those. Well. They were also talking about placing transfer stations possibly closer to us. Uh, so <coughs> they still have some work to do also. They do. They do. And their grant money won't be in until 2018, sometime in 2018. So that's a little ways out yet. And it's not totally, and I'm not saying we're going to do that, but it's not totally out of the realm to possibly suggest that we end up selling the landfill to a commercial operator. Because we do have value. We do have assets out there. Sure. We do have permits. Sure. That, that will be difficult for someone else to go through that process. Mm -hmm. So if we <clears> wanted to do that, we also have the opportunity to maybe uh, recoup enough from, I mean, sure enough, pay for all the costs we have to go to put a building right. and everything. Right. I guess for me, because I'm an action person, is I like to see a timeline of what, how we're going to look at things and evaluate them and get the research mm -hmm. done. Well, <clears throat> I would say, Donna, realistically, that we probably won't go to Arizona until June, because the month of May is already pretty full, and we also have full plates. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that maybe if we if you want to research the, land, the transfer station stuff a little bit, yeah, in that same that. time frame. I'm booked yeah. for this month. And then uh, out there trying to get that other trench started. So um, after this month, then then we can really get really get going on things. I also yeah. heard a very nice compliment. And I'm going to quote this. I'm going to clean it up. But he said, "I dang near run off the road when I saw you had a scraper out there digging trenches." Meaning. Hell, that's good. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I mean, we're not doing it with the front end loader. We got a scraper out there, and, and this particular person made the remark to me, well, "Wow, hey, that's right. That's good." I said, "Yeah, that was Rusty's idea." <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, then you just have a one-man operation going on, so okay. um, a lot more efficient. Yeah, you know, I I know. I'm going to say within the last couple of weeks we were made aware of a complaint with regards to ours. I don't know if you saw that. Was that they were, they were in out there thought it would be open and it wasn't. Um, and again, we do have the posted hours. Is there any <coughs> yeah. you know, manpower that day? Or? It's, on the, it's on the website and well, this well, and it's yeah. in the yeah. in the Tribune. This too, thing went out though, and, and it was during I think posted hours, and it was closed at three thirty. They said it was closed, and it was supposed to be open until four. No, unless it was a windy day, which we haven't closed for wind for a while. Okay, well we'll watch and see. Yeah. But that's 
And it may have been a windy event, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, because that's the only time that we close is, is if there's high wind. So it has to be blowing 35 miles an hour for an hour. For that to happen? Uh, can yeah. I just suggest that is there any way, place to post a sign if you have to do that because of wind? Because people may not have that same wind in a different part of the county and travel there. And they don't. There. They don't. Right. Right. And um, when we do close, then I put it on the answering machine too so people could call and then they get the message that way too. Well, I could just put a sign out that this is in the event of exceeding 35 miles an hour, the landfill may be closed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's on the website too. You drive in and out and see that. Yeah. But I know I've had uh, winds in the last two weeks, uh, three weeks, down at my place that have exceeded yeah. Yeah. 35 miles an hour in the afternoon. We try to stay open. We'll close the pit at 35, but we still have the roll off where people could put their bags. But when things start flying around, it's time to close the gate. And so we do. Okay, anything else? Nope. Don't use the word prone. Pardon? I said, don't use the word prone in the sign. Oh, right. Apparently, right that caused some <laughs> consternation with someone previously. It's a little inside it was, joke. It was an inside Could be attempted, prone to close. a very poor attempt at some humor. Okay. I know we've got a 12 o'clock workshop, and we still have two more reports to go. Um, Anything is else? That all I, sent? I think I sent a quarterly report that we have to send to the state to every mm -hmm. quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First signature. Okay, now, so what that is, every vehicle that comes in the landfill, we have to pay the state so much money for every mm -hmm. vehicle and every commercial vehicle. So that's where that money that's where the total is down at. It that's comes in the from the for people them. dumping, and then we have to pay the state their cut. Yeah. Because for Mexico, Cars we call are it one more price, data. pickups and trailers are another price, and commercial vehicles are another price. So that's what that's all about. Okay. So they can save up to help pay for our well. Well, congratulations on your inspection. It's a great thing. Please. Congratulate the Great thing your they employees come out by there on behalf of the board. Because they go through everything. Mm -hmm. they <laughs> well, you can they see really here, do. it's right. good. Okay. So that's a good thing, yeah. Good news. Sorry to keep you okay. waiting. Bob. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's see you later. Oh, I'm happy. Oh, I'm napping back there. Oh, I thought Dennis was up. Oh, are you on? Come on, give us a report. I'm sorry. I just assume you're both there. I apologize. He just, yeah, I forgot to. He just has a check for that last load of cardboard. Thank you. Ah. That's all I was going to tell you. We got a nice check. Good. Yesterday, four thousand thirty-nine dollars for our cardboard recycle. Great! So congratulations. That's, that's new money for the county. Yeah. That's, well done. That's super. So, and that's the biggest one we've ever had. Wow. Well, four thousand nine hundred thirty-nine dollars. Just over four thousand. And uh, just wanted to let you know that that's new money. We're we're contributing to that at the ranch. Well. It. Right now, the commodities market is good for cardboard, $190 a ton. It's been as low as 75 and uh, I just wanted to let you know that it's... $90 a ton? Well, it's 190 right now. 190 So, but how many ton would that 4,000 represent? Uh, 22 about tons. 20, about a semi-load. 42,000 something. 560. We're hurrying. So We're hurrying, Lisa. Uh, and that's just just wanted to let you know that's fifty four bales. Fifty four bales. That's new money. It's not tax money. It's not. Come. I guess probably since you it. folks have been here as commissioners, this is the first time you have someone come in from the landfill and say we got new money. <laughs> so. So. Sorry, I thought you and you and him were together on the same report. So. Well, sort of. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank and thanks for Thank doing you. what you do. Thank you.
Yeah, there you go. See, it's catchy. <laughs> Sorry. If we could just keep it. <laughs> of course, not much. Um, I have redone those job descriptions, and so you can peek at them if I miss something. I should have put them, the two together. Thank you. And um, I have the closure policy as well. And there are three copies just so we'd have an original signature post, original to put on the personnel policy, and the other one was just in case because after the copies they get ugly. So there are those. Um, so we should fill in yesterday's date on there. Uh -huh. there. Someone working on a list of phone I could, but it would have been <clears throat> pretty rushed. Um, let's see. Do you need one for yours? So that could be the spare. One to post, one for my policy, and one for you to, I don't know, what I don't know what it does. And I'm good with not knowing, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Let me think on Yeah, it's like, I don't know. But if not, I could always print another one off and make it dated inside right. so you can have it. I guess we could record that one. Or something. Or I could. So what was changed but was whatever. the grammatical. It's from yesterday. And when I could co color the co make copies of the color, it just the looks. Grammatical. Yeah, it's just not fun anymore. I like it on the first go around. For now. your information, I know you and I had a meeting scheduled at nine tomorrow. We have a BOCC meeting. Well, that'll give me a little more time to get the updates and go from there. I have a little bit of paperwork for us to talk about, too. And then this came through. I guess the one thing that bothers me a little bit <clears throat> is that I close the job. We make the decision. I say we're shutting down. But then I need to make six or seven or eight phone calls. Why couldn't we just have a calling tree that the EOC could activate? And that's fine unless it costs us money. <laughs> Guess I'm frugal. Um, that's what we we agreed yesterday. I know, but okay. as we look at this, that means we have to be we, we whoever makes the call has got to make those seven or eight phone calls. And I'm just wondering, we have the AOC notify the public. We can go on with this because we can sign up we need to later. But that, you know, we have the responsibility that they're notified. Those people, yes. Yeah, but where I'm coming from is that we have a blizzard out here. We shut the office down. Then I've got to have a calling list of them making, how many we're figuring? Maybe seven phone calls or eight? Each one of us? Because we were going to divide it up to the. Departments that we're oh, responsible for. Oh, okay. Well, see, we don't have that. There's that's the phone we, tree so far. That's the tree. You originally talked about each of you letting your departments know. Brenda letting the elected officials know. But that does. It says that we'll let everybody know. <laughs> I'm just. It, it's not a big bone of contention, but you know I don't have any problem letting my departments know. But I'm, I'm, whatever makes the most sense. Well, um, it could be that if we can't get a hold of, if only two of the three commissioners are available or one of the three, then that commissioner might be, have to make all the calls. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. If we all three there, that's not an issue. So. 
if we all, pardon my, my English language, I did pass English 101 and I made it all the way through 103. And I did pass my English proficiency required to get my degree. Would you want to go into the arm? You're comfortable with that? Okay, you're off the pot and that's unusual. Yeah, I made this many briefs this yesterday. There's not that many department heads. If I need to make 10 phone calls, I make 10 phone calls. I, I don't I guess see that's the what issue I'm, here. I'm, I've been used to doing that in the past, so. Yeah. 12, 15. I mean, it's not like I'm going to make 100, even if I was making 100 phone calls, if that's what's needed. At the well, time and actually, I could. We could go on, I'm going to say I could, but I don't think I can do a Samsung. Somebody who knows a Samsung could go in and make you a call list, and you could text everyone and have them reply. But I can't do a Samsung, but I know other people know Samsung. And just waving her hand back there. Yeah. Well, let's, let's prove yeah. this. Let's so, act on this procedure. Or we need to fine tune it. We'll fine tune it. Just take it as it is. Okay. So do I? We acted on it yesterday. I know, but we can always amend something. Okay. Just because we did it today, yesterday, doesn't mean we can't right. tweak it today. But uh, okay. But that'll make it real easy. You can just go. She'll mark. She'll name it the closure list. You can go in and say that one sentence okay. and hit one send, and you're you're good to go. So she needed three. She needs three signatures. Well, let's see. These are all the Wait same a thing. Wait a minute. Oh, we have to have three copies? Yes, she stated she needed three. Excuse me, go ahead, I'll keep passing to you. I'm sorry. And then that was it for me. Uh, I just want to say, uh, depending on actions and responses that we have had <coughs> today, hopefully from Tony Frank, um, I will keep you in the loop. We'll know what, where we're headed okay, tomorrow. We had people in the audience earlier that were confused with what was happening yesterday as far as job description and a 1099 employee of our county. So we stated earlier that we will, uh, once we're at that point, that we will share with the public what the uh, 1099 responsibilities will be. The best way to do that, in my opinion, is we actually write an um, independent contractor agreement to just make sure we don't overstep the bounds of an independent contractor, which is what I think that those folks were concerned okay. about. I think we'll be fine with that. Anything else for us? Nope, that was it. <coughs> Anything else for her? You were wonderful and easy today. Thank I know. You. <laughs> this is probably the best part of the whole day. But you, you will you will hear from me later. Okay. And then you guys yeah, can let you. me know on yep. that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Don. Thanks. All right. And now we have a first. Yes. She's Chairs welcome. All warmed up for you. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Well, Lisa, I apologize oh. for not coming over personally. No worries. I was here all day yesterday. You met Glenn Smith. Good to see you. Since you were here. I looked at your back when you interviewed. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Kelly, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering at the health fair when we were behind oh, yeah. and you stepped in and helped. Fun stuff. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you'll have to kind of help me with how we go about this, but there's two things that we need to particularly look at, and that is um, renewing Carmeline's contract. Yep. That's on my, on my calendar. Um, and then the other thing is we talked about some orientation stuff for my position. Some what? Orientation. Um, and. For you? It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's my understanding that Gail Stoltzfus is willing to come back and do a few days with me. Yeah. Um, if we're willing to pay her to do that, is that a possibility? Absolutely. Okay. Um, do we know how much she is requesting or what kind of? Yeah, I think if we just shoot her something. Get the details and okay. absolutely would like you to get quoted. Okay, yeah. Probably just a couple of days, really, because by the time she's able to come, I'll have kind of an idea of what I need to know from her, and then so it shouldn't be a lot of time, but... I, it's very important for you to get up to speed 
don't sell yourself short okay. by saving us two hundred dollars or something like you know what I'm saying. Okay, I appreciate it's that. It's not significant. You. Let's get it up to speed as best yeah. as possible. Well, I just want to add that you should probably tell um, our HR director. Right. Okay. So she's aware that she's coming back because there's paperwork to file. Mm -hmm. No, a normal procedure, though, isn't just to jump in and say, we'll pay it. Normally, we decide how much it's going to cost us. I understand. And then we do that. So that's a, you know, there's a process that we do mm -hmm. follow. We just don't jump Absolutely. in and say, we'll pay it. But the bottom line is, I understand. we want her down here to help you. So assuming it's not outrageous, I suspect yeah. we're going to say it's think okay. Knowing Gail, it's probably going to Also, we are scheduled to go to a, this week, something in San Luis Valley. Wasn't there a training session or something? Next you know, week? I don't have anything from San Luis Valley. I remember talking about that, but I don't. I'll ask Rhonda if she knows. Ask Rhonda because she's... it was something that I got yeah. from. It was a. I know we talked about that too. Uh, some kind of a session. So, so in Denver, yeah. the twenty third, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth is like a, a public health director orientation three. for three days, and that's going to be. And I feel super fortunate because apparently that only happens like every two years. And I talked to the director of public health in Pueblo yesterday, and she's been there two years and has never had that orientation. Okay. So I'm when excited you, about that. Just a thought. Okay. I realized that having Gail on site with, for training would be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. But she does live in Denver, as I recall. And maybe it would be less expensive if we just had you. If we could, I'm just a thought. Mm -hmm. That we have that occur around that same trip. Okay. Um, and, and you may be tired of you may you know, sometimes I can only absorb so much in a short period of time. Right. So, Let me but, get a little closer, maybe to that. Yeah. Just I don't know. Just, just we'll, see where I'm coming yeah, from with that would because, make it easier, but for her. Right. And I'll have the same list of questions here as there. So you're right. Yeah. And if I have a computer, I'll be. Okay. If you have a computer, you um, have one. I have a desktop computer. Okay, going through your report, how many did we have at the health fair? Any ideas? Yes. Well, what I have is just the, the lab numbers. So there was 463 people in attendance that did that had labs drawn. Okay. Um, and this. So I would guess that that's pretty close to last year, or maybe. Even well, this more. report that Beth put together. So I'm not. No, no, but I'm just. Saying, I don't know, but I'm just saying. I'm not pawning it off on Beth, but I. But no, no, but I think. This, so she says that there was actually less in attendance, but there's not an actual number. Okay. Um, than we had last year, slightly less in participation, um, but it says the long. But there was longer lines for blood draws, which I know. Um, I think we're. No, it was successful. I think so too, and it was, and there was more tubes, you know, like. More tubes to drop per person, which takes longer. Was so. there an issue with people showing up to do the phlebotomy? I don't think so. Okay. I think it just, I think there was just more acuity than what we okay. are used to because there was, because we did, there was another lab that we did this year that we hadn't done before. It was like a, I don't know, a testosterone level or something. And I think more people signed up for that than what they had anticipated. So, I mean, when you think about 463 per people, and it's probably 30 seconds longer, still that adds quite up. So, um, the one thing that stuck out to me, though, which you guys probably don't even really care about, but our seems like our county, our results out of range for hemoglobin A1C, which is our diabetic tracking, um, 52% of the people that got that test were out of range. So I'm going to do some education on that and see if we can kind of help. I don't know. Part of my is public health improvement plan is going to start right away. So I'm going to be helpful. Put that in there because it seems like there's some things can be reached. Okay, the school nurse. Uh, Mark Paylor stopped by one day and asked if we would be interested in continuing on. Mm -hmm. But a part of what has been paid for the school nurse salary come out of some grants. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know the status of if we need to, if we're applying and we need to be applying? So it's my understanding that Ted Wigan and Cindy Howard have put together 
Oh no, that's MRC. I'm sorry, I got those mixed up. I'm still learning all these little acronyms. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but we do have that grant money for 2017, is my understanding. I'll verify that to be sure. But it was what we put in the budget for the EPR. So do you have a copy of that? I just highlighted. So this, this budget this form EPR, EPR. EPR. Oh wait, OEP. I'm trying to see which form that is. Which one it's is that? the EPR budget form. Wait a minute, I think I have. Jay, look at um, in our packet, in the packet dated for today, 5-3, down the bottom, there's a whole bunch of... Yeah, I don't think That's all right. You're talking, so it's the... Public health nurse operating budget. It's all the way to the right, down the bottom. And we got eighteen thousand. Mm -hmm. And that. I think is about the same as last year. Do you want, just want my copy? Because I have lots uh, of copies, okay. so. Um, uh, about you found it, didn't you, Donna? Yep. So that, that number is, I don't, so in this thing they're asking for essentially a $500 increase for yes. the entire year using that EPR grant, so this figure is with that included. The 18206 includes that? Mm-hmm. And this line that says assistant EPR planner, that's actually, that whole entire figure is Carmeline's salary, essentially. For a year? Mm-hmm. Because we only pay her for one day. Okay. A week. We pay her a thousand dollars a month. That's her. That's what the county pays the school district. And this is different. Wow. That's what we did. This, this current. Did you this find the, the IGA in here? <coughs> so I have a copy of the IGA, and it is. It does have it all on page two. Okay, we the, the the agreement we have this current year is that the school district pays twenty one thousand. Correct. Uh, Custer County, we pay six thousand, and the public health grant pays five thousand. Thank you. Did you? I have it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, right, the grant pays. Yeah. So our finance office monthly writes a nine this, this current year mm -hmm. writes a nine thousand or excuse me nine hundred sixty one dollar check to the school to the school district, district and they yeah. take care of everything else. Yeah, yeah, nine hundred sixteen dollars um, and sixty six cents. So we're taking he's talking about a five hundred dollar a year. Now did did did. Uh, did Beth write this? Yes. So she's requesting that that the commissioners or that you know that the county match the five hundred that we were able to do with the EPR grant. Can I just say, where are you seeing that increase of five hundred dollars? Because I don't know where you are. It's in the yeah. It's like this part of the additional information. Are you on this page? Immunization. Keep coming down. There you are. Right, right there, where it says additional information. So 
you're asking the commission for a match of the five hundred dollars. Yes. Now, I think the school district gave her some more money for proposing to her. Let me check the mark and see, but that was the, the conversation we had wasn't real long. It was just, you know, I stopped in and said, mm -hmm. what you? And I said, yes, we'll, we'll work something Talk out. About it. Okay. Um, when would this be effective? This says August 1 through July 31st. That's her contract date, is my understanding, yeah. Okay. Her contract with the school. Correct. So, Which ours is in conjunction with that. So we still have a little bit of time to, to find to out think what about they it. did. Yeah. Right, and to see what the school offered her as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that's, you know, as we go forward, I think this is something that we sure need to. I'd like to see if we can have this wrapped up by the first of next month. Is that reasonable with you, sir? Here. Um, and what is Vax Care? Okay, so Vax Care is a new. <clears throat> Bear with me because I'm still trying to figure this all out too. But it's going to be essentially a kiosk that these people bring in, put in our clinic, I in, mean, in, in our office, in the clinic. And when we take a vaccine out, it's already logged in there, so they replace it. It's all billed, documented through their system. Um, apparently, several other <coughs> public health agencies are using it and have been successful with it. It sounds good to me because then it, it kind of separates us from the clinic so that we don't have to rely on them for, for record keeping and Is that ordering. another refrigerator? It is, but it would replace the refrigerator that we have, is my understanding. Is it noiseless? I should hope so. Oh my goodness. That's not a really good one. <laughs> that office is horrible. <laughs> okay, Clint, have you seen a copy of this fax Do you have a copy of the report no. agreement? I can give you this one if you'd like, because I can get a copy of it too. And this is clear at the end of my report. And it's Clint, it was included in the board. Yeah, and what happens is that when I open stuff, then it disappears sometimes. So I'm just going to bring my laptop from now on instead of having you send me the other way because okay. I do stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll be having a meeting next week about Vax Care. They're actually going to, the, the company's coming to kind of give us an in service and a, their pitch on it. So if you all like to come, it's going to be Tuesday. Do you know what it's going to be? It's Tuesday, and I don't know why I didn't bring my day planner. I've got it here. Tuesday, May 9th at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. That's in your report. That's going to be at your office? Yes. Yes. And Delwyn will be there as well as... What time is it? 11. 11. Okay. I've, I've got I'm, tourism. I'm meeting. assuming that's at the clinic. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've tied up. Are you... Can you go? Okay. okay. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Um, I have no other questions. questions. Do any of you have any questions? Uh, we just need correspondence uh, with regards to what we asked about, Gail. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll get on that this afternoon and let you know what I find out. And then as far as the Carmelines deal with the school, will you be able to find out about that? And then we can kind of <coughs> just let me know what yeah, you need from me. Collect to be some of this one. Yeah. It's kind of okay. falls under his, but yeah. she's a but okay. she's the Perfect. you know that's his area. But 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 Donna works personnel. And this is a personnel issue. Right. So okay, sounds good. So yeah, I'll let you know as soon as I know or hear anything more from Gail. And How are you doing? Good. good. We haven't killed you yet. Not yet. Okay, have number we, three. Have we? Uh, Mm -hmm. Encountered any major challenges with space or anything over there? No, not really. I picked up a desk yesterday at Office Depot on my way home from Pueblo so that we can switch our stuff around. But other than that, yeah, we're cruising right along. Don't just have to hesitate to holler. Okay, thank you. We're yeah, kind of like acronym overload is what I feel like right yeah. now. I have a whole page. <laughs> you know, on, you know, on our side, we don't have just your agency, we got all the others. Right. Yeah, 
Great. All right. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right. Take care. Back to the agenda items. I have this as a completion of our published agenda. Do we have anything else at this time that we need to discuss? Um, I do not, Mr. Chairman. I, I was just given something by our HR person regarding personnel. I'll just deal with it. talk to you prior. Okay, thank you. So, do we need to have another executive session? No, he Moment said he would talk to him. Okay. So, we're good. I will declare the meeting adjourned at 12.08 and I will simultaneously declare the workshop.